things. Um, Ollie is just, I think, inspirational in what he does. So, Ollie, do you want to come over and say a few words and tell people a bit about one of your one of your pieces over here for me? Thanks, George. Thanks very much for this. Um, ladies and gentlemen, just really, let's give it up for George. Yeah. Woo! Now, I met this bloke a couple of years ago, and by jeez, by crikey, he is a fantastic bloke, and every time I see him, he's always got a smile on his face, he's always welcoming, he's always positive, and I think that's something that, being in the tourism industry, he is just going to thrive. And uh, thank you all for coming down. It's really, really, really amazing to see everybody here. And uh, thanks, Steve. It was a great chat the other day. Uh, really good to see you know, the transition going so well and, and you're, you're moving on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I've only got two minutes, so I'll shut up. <laughs> good job. And I've got too many uh, champagnes. Um, look, hey, just to give you a bit of a heads up about my type of photography, um, Basically, I do not use Photoshop, okay? I'm a bit of an old schooler. Uh, I use filters on front of the camera, and uh, you'll see some of these colors that really come through in the images um, are because I use filters. So when I'm looking at the image, that's what I'm taking. Um, I really enjoy landscape. It's been like my passion in photography, but my trade is a portrait photographer by trade. So that's what I've been doing for 10 years. And I love people, I love it when a photographer comes into a room and just changes the whole feeling. You can tell when you've got a good photographer in the room straight away, he just creates something that's like, oh, suddenly I'm a rock star. And people change, people change in front of a camera. Um, and you'll notice it with anything, with an iPhone or whatever, people change straight away. They'll put on these beautiful fake smiles. <laughs> But what what will actually happen is is um, it really creates a mood, and that, that's what I like with my landscapes as well. I just wanted to spend um, a, a brief second on this one here. If you ever get a chance to have a look at it, of course you will now. Um, does anybody know where this is taken? Hold oh, Dan. Who said that? Now, I did a bit of research on Fog Dam, as you do when, you, when you're doing a photo, um, and it's, it was, at the time, in 1956, it was, it was a project started up by Alan Chase, and he was a Hollywood like TV celebrity in the 50s, who decided to come to Darwin and grow rice. Okay, now that's a fascinating story to start off with, but what's even more fascinating is the big crocodile that looked out there while I was trying to take this photo. Um, <laughs> As soon as I heard it, uh, I turned around and uh, got the vehicle and drove down the road, the rest of the road. Uh, I come up to this position and I was like, that's it, that's where I'm going to take the shot. Uh, and I walked further down the road and I heard this big splash and I just turned around straight away and thought, yeah, I'll get a vehicle to get to the next part. The initial shot I was going to take was the beautiful sunset with the, you know, the bird in the background, the typical Darwin logo, which has... Um, you know, the Jabiru in it. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get that shot, but one day I will. What I really like about this image, however, is it's orange. Now, does anybody know what orange represents in the thought process in a human being? Okay, orange is an ideas color. It's a really inspirational color. It's a color that can um, induce a really positive feeling of being alive, not just living in the mundane world, not just doing the regular stuff, but actually getting inspiration to do bigger and better things in life. And that's what I really liked about this story, because Alan Chase was a man who decided to negotiate a deal to do the biggest agri agricultural um, project in the whole world at the time, and he chose Darwin. From this dam, Fog Dam, which was done in 1956 by RAF, um, which cost $100,000, ended up, they built the Humpty Doo pub. All right? That's where all the workers had to live, so they made a place where people would work. 
same with what's happening now in the new generation. But this was in the old days. So it's amazing that what that guy's vision he had to do something was just that inspirational. And that's what I really like about this road that's going off into the distance. Um, because it's got that real feeling of, wow, if you really want to go for it, if you really want to take something and do something with your life, and you've got some idea, and you want to go there, then you take that road. Okay, thanks very much for listening, guys. I think I've overcome it. Thanks, Colin. Now.